Tanse. Um, my name is Desmond Bull, as she had mentioned. <laughs> I'm a counselor for the Louis Bull Tribe, which is about 70 kilometers uh, south of here. Um, I've been, uh, this is my third term in council, and I'm very happy to be returning as a leader for my tribe. Um, uh, a lot of the work that I did in regards to renewables and green technology of implementing into my tribe was very successful in regards to me keeping this position I have within my tribe. I'm very honored again to be on the stage with amazing beings to speak on energy transition, sustainability, efficiency, and addressing climate change issues. Although I am First Nations, I'm not here to represent all First Nations or my tribe. As a First Nations leader, I am here to share my experience on how I utilize green technology to address climate change issues in my community. Many organizations, uh, which you had mentioned, have been influential in my life and had contributed to my passion in environmental stewardship and based on an ind indigenous understanding to address climate change. When I began to develop my tribe's first solar project of cultivating, cultivating 85 kilowatts of solar energy, it garnered the attention of various energy organizations and I had been invited to partake uh, or sit on a board or, or be a part of that uh, thought process. <clears throat> To this date, I'm very honored and proud to say that we have 188 kilowatts of solar energy on eight public buildings. I'm very honored to mention also, these projects were 100% funded through outside resources, partnerships, collaborations, meaning not one penny from my tribe had went into the project of, of developing these systems or creating capacity development to making sure that my members were trained to do the installations. As I'm fairly new to the energy transition in Alberta and green technology, I accepted any opportunity to expand my knowledge and share my First Nation cultural heritage. With opportunities they presented, I was able to have a voice to share these vision. My journey had began, <clears throat> my journey had began in, uh, at the Walrus Talks and worked uh, various, into various facets, including the Energy Efficiency Advisory, Solar Society of Alberta, the 2020, and the Indigenous Cl Climate Action Team. While all this journey had brought me to a clear understanding that we in Canada, under these treaties, have an obligation to take care of this land and each other for future generations. In a sense, under these treaties and shared understanding, we are all treaty people and should address climate issues as a collective, not individuals of ethnicity or nationality, but beings of Mother Earth. With my knowledge I had gained through the networking and great technology, it was important for me to share my First Nation insights and cultural practices. This has included the importance to duly consult with First Nations. This is the proper process of engagement and dialogue through respectful practices and protocol when addressing First Nation leaderships or elders. One of the more exciting models was the wonderful collaboration between Iron and Earth and my tribe. Iron and Earth is an organization that assists tradespeople in re redeveloping their skills in a new green energy sector. We shared the idea of reskilling tradespeople and developed a program in my tribe, whereas <clears throat> 10 oil gas workers with five First Nations will train in my tribe, had trained in my tribe and worked on the installation of an eight kilowatt PV system on our community daycare. We also had a cultural integrated program that included a pipe ceremony, a sweat lodge, traditional meals with a cultural power entertainment from our youth at a local school. As respected other participants' belief systems, we did not expect mandatory participation, but it was well expected, and if not, all participants did partake. The project spiritually uplifted me as a person who believes in truth and reconciliation. I honestly believe we cannot have real rec reconciliation without the history and truth of what Indigenous people are. This project complemented the commitment towards this truth by sharing with the participants of what First Nations people are through cultural practices, ceremony, and showing our ancestral commitment to Mother Earth. Reconciliation can be a part of this process in green energy transition through First Nation partnerships, collaborations, and conversations toward climate change issues. With true partnerships, we can create long-term generation collaborations in energy development, conservation that can extend beyond government reconciliation and reparations. We can call by beginning to contribute to one another by recognizing recognition through practicing, embracing sustainability and being environmentally conscious in our practices while addressing climate, climate change issues. Climate change is not, a first, is not an industry, government, or First Nation, or Canadian citizen issue. This is a human being issue and should be addressed as such. If we as human beings need to find a common interest that trends across nationality, cultures, and borders, then climate change is that common interest. We as Canadians and First Nations are fortunate in this country to have the treaty 
which is the foundation of sharing our collective interests in Canada. This same treaty can be the foundation in addressing climate change as First Nations and Canadian citizens alike. When I say we are all treaty, we are all treaty people and, you, and we should utilize our treaties for the benefit of creating sustainability for all future beings and Canadian citizens. I am forever grateful for all the success in all the energy transition for my tribe while addressing these climate issues. But time is ticking and we must address these issues much more fluidly and much more quickly. So thank you very much for your time. Hi, hi.